You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. For this video, we are going to tackle Jade, also known as Cool Cat from the Brad's Pack. I remember promising that all of them would be done this year, but you know, I will do my best however to finish them as soon as possible. Jade was the one I really loved growing up because I related to her the most, visually and skill-wise. Well, some of her skills. She was the group's fashion designer and her style was the edgiest and the trendiest. When the live-action movie came out, I was literally like her because I would modify my outfit when I get dropped off of school. I mean, it wasn't a complete 360 like she did, but the stuff I wanted to wear, I was not allowed to. Like accessories, skinny jeans, and mismatched shoes. <laughs> I love how they also gave her character layers in the live action, like she was just not fashionable but also smart and studious. My vision for Jade has always been edgy and a little bit gothic. I imagine she's in college, getting a degree in fashion and science. Is that too much? Not for Jade. <laughs> I also kind of inputted my personal style onto her, which is just a lot of black clothing. I designed her to have an e-girl slash new goth type of vibe since I can imagine her quickly putting this outfit together. I mean, she's a double major, so she needs to be on the go, you know? I gave her a black turtleneck layered under a purple graphic shirt, and I matched that with a high-waisted pleated skirt and tied it with a ring and chain accented belt. She's also wearing fishnets and a pair of platform boots. This is a classic silhouette and I would literally wear this in a heartbeat if I had it. Actually, I do have it. <laughs> Besides the boots, but yeah. With that being said, let's go ahead with the video. So for the head, I will be using this jade from the collector set designed by the one and only Hayden Williams. As you can see, she has a beautiful face. It's so perfect actually and her hair the hair is everything she has the classic jade style hair it's so long and it's literally jet black which i love and so yeah this is the head that we will be using and for her body i will be using my custom starfire um which is holly o'hair from ever after high as you can see this i made five years ago so hot glue gun everywhere painted on fabric, everything. I mean, you know, the face actually still holds up pretty well, I would say, and still vibrant. I mean, five years ago, my goodness. And don't worry, I plan on making a more comic book accurate Starfire. Um, so that means maybe using like a Barbie doll or something. <laughs> But yes, we will be using this body and the skin matching is actually pretty close. So let's go ahead and take her head off. And of course, I will be cutting off her feet. It's gonna be a Cinderella moment. We need an Ever After High doll to be able to wear Bratz shoes. So just be very careful if you try to emulate this, if you try this at home, just be careful. And of course, if you've been here before, if you've watched my Tweevils, my Burdine, all of that, you know that we have to drill a hole inside of her legs so that we can put a screw in. So I'm just doing this with my manual drill, and then I'm actually going to use an electric drill as well, um, just to make it a little bit easier and faster. And now I'm taking a hanger bolt and this is the specs of it. This is the packaging. I got it from Home Depot and it looks like this. We're gonna be screwing in the one with the pointy end inside her legs as you can see. And I tried to use my drill for this one. Um, it didn't really help all the way. Um, it kind of struggled to go all the way in. So I ended up using pliers to really secure it. And yes, this clip is actually from the Casey doll. As you can see, that's why I don't have nail polish on. <laughs> but my camera ended up not recording the entire thing of me putting it together, but it's literally the same thing. So, you know, continuity error. 
Now let's go ahead and work on her face, and as usual, I'm taking acetone to remove her factory paint slowly but surely. And as you can see, it actually stains her face. You can see her eyebrows still there a little bit, um, the outline of her lips is still there, and some of her eyes actually remains. Um, I'm okay with it. It's a good guideline, you know, for repaints. <laughs> And of course, before going in, I sprayed this with Mr. Super Clear at least two times to act as a primer and a base for our pencils and all of the pigments to adhere to it. And now let's go ahead and start sketching her features. And as usual, I go for like a brown or a lighter pencil just so that when you make mistakes, which I do all the time, it's easier to erase and it's not as, you know, shocking. Um, it also kind of prevents it from staining. Um, too much because if you go for a really really dark pencil it may stain it so try to do that So Jade's eye color officially is both green and brown. I guess it just depends on the doll. It depends on what contact lens she has on that day. Um, but I decided to give her green eyes. I thought it would just be really, really cool with the entire color story. It's like purple and green. Hello, Maleficent. Um, but also my reasoning is that at birth, she had green eyes and that's why her name is Jade. But I've definitely seen dolls of her with both brown and green eyes. So I guess... That's just her color, her eye color. It just changes. <laughs> it changes with the season. <laughs> and then I wanted to give her pink and kind of like purpley eyeshadow because of her logo, her Cool Cat logo, which is my favorite um, Bratz logo by far. It's just so cool. It's very Kitty Ann looking. Like just the cat logo itself is just so, so cute. It was also kind of funny that the Bratz pack always say, Oh, we would never wear pink. But like, Jade's logo is pink. Like, she wears pink all the time. Like, Jade is kind of like, she wears pink a lot. Um, it was just kind of funny in the movies and in the TV series how they were like, Ah, oh, I hate pink. I'm like, do you? <laughs> Now let's give her some bottom lashes. It's kind of like a love and hate relationship because I love it when they're really sharp and I hate it when they're not that sharp. So um, yeah, I go for it with uh, brown first and then we'll define it with black later. If you're new to doll repainting, I mean, this is literally how I recorded it and how I repainted the face. You just go back and forth and you define details here and there. Um, so you really just layer it. Layering is key, like I always say. Um, although Mark makes fun of me because I definitely do too much layer, I would say. Um, but you know, layering is fun. <laughs> Now let's go ahead and define her brows, the frames to her eyes, and we're just making it black to match her hair. And now let's go ahead and give her a stunning, sharp, eyeliner one of my favorite parts again kind of love and hate because sometimes it's not as sharp but i try my best to make it as sharp as possible and now i'm building the purple side the purple outer layer of the eyeshadow just to kind of smoke it out and define it a little bit um, just to add dimension in the eyeshadow as well and then to give her overall face a little bit more dimension, I am highlighting the brow bone. I always try to do this just to really define the shape of the doll's face. I feel like it really does highlight and it brings out the definition of the eyes. And I don't know, I just feel like it's cool and it makes the eyebrow a little bit more sharper too. I really need MGA to make another Bratz game for the next generation, you know, for the PS5 or even Switch, because that would be so, so iconic and the possibilities will be 
probably endless. Like imagine the clothes, the hair physics will be so cool, the animation, oh my god. I just remember being so obsessed with the PS2 games. I did hate the fact that I would spend so much time putting on the makeup on the brats individually and then the next time you go to the game again they would all disappear. I'm like um hello. I specifically remember giving her black lipstick what happened and speaking of black lipstick let's go ahead and give Jade black lipstick. I just thought it would be really really cool and I love it so much. I love I just I love black lipstick especially the matte ones. They're fun. And if you're wondering why I gave her kind of like a rosy nude at first instead of going at it with black pencil, it's because that's my version of sketching out her lips and making sure the shape is correct because obviously there's a lot of erasing here and there and I'd rather erase the rosy nude color instead of black because it's much easier and it's much cleaner. And we've pretty much covered everything in terms of features. Now we just have to detail things. As you can see, I'm kind of giving her eyebrows an ombre effect. And now we're gonna go ahead and detail the eyeshadow a little bit more with the purple. Like I said, I kind of want to ombre that and have a gradient effect for her eyeshadow. And yeah, we'll just work on details for the eyes and all that. To really make sure the whites in her eyes and also her catch lights are opaque white, I go at it with my white gouache paint. You can also use acrylic paint um, for sure. Now I'm highlighting her irises with a light green color and this is just so that it doesn't look too flat for the eyes and later on I'll also go over it with some yellow just to really give it more dimension. And now let's go ahead and give her some catch lights again with gouache paint or acrylic and I for the most part my go-to catch lights are kind of scratchy looking and then I add a, a few dots and lines here and there but you can really have fun with the catch lights I feel like it really gives life to a doll you know And now I'm taking resin metallic pigment and this one as you can see is in pink and I'm just adding that onto her eyeshadow and also onto her cheeks and I think it's just really really cool. It has such a dimension on it that you can see right here. It really does come off so pigmented that you have to kind of blur it out and it's just such a fun effect and you guys should really definitely try it out. Um, again, that is the resin metallic pigments. And then I layer that with a white metallic pigment and oh my goodness, it's so pearly and it's definitely much better than makeup because this is meant for art and crafts and it, it doesn't, I don't think it has oil base in it, which is really, really cool. And now let's go ahead and give her some 3D lashes and I'm using Elmer's glue wall to glue it on and I'm using individual fake human lashes and per eye I think I use 10 more or less and this step is definitely not my favorite just because it's so difficult to really do it. Um, the, mo the movie magic in videos really does not justify how long it takes to glue these on as you can see it's like wobbling here and there. Um, but it's, it's fun. The effect is really, really fun and it's worth it in the end. I then just add two graphic liners in each eye. Um, as you can see, they're just thicker. They're a different lash actually, um, but I feel like it's, it's just a little bit more fun. And that's pretty much it for Jade's face up. As you can see, I love it so much. The black lipstick ties everything together. It's just really, really fun. The highlight, oh my God, her cheeks. Ah, look at that, that was, it's so beautiful. And I just love her smize. I love her glance. It's just so cool. And the eye makeup, I'm obsessed. And here is a before and after, just so that you can compare the before and the after. <laughs> 
um, but I really really love it. I love the effect and it's just really really cool I think. Now let's go ahead and style her hair and it's just a pigtails so I'm just gathering everything and I'm dividing it in two as you can see right here and I did wash it so it's a little bit easier to style. For her outfit, the top and also the skirt are both made by That Plastic Biz on Instagram and I am so obsessed with it. The skirt is so so cool and I love how it kind of has texture in it and the pleats are everything. It's so so fun. And then for the fishnets, I'm just using a regular Ever After High stockings right here. I believe this is from Apple White. Now let's go ahead and add the graphic detail onto the purple shirt and as you can see I'm using this pleather fabric in white and it's shiny um, but I'm actually going to be using the back of it um, because it's matte and that's it's because it's matte. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut it in this rectangle piece. Um, yeah. Then I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that with fabric glue so it retains its flexibility. It does take a while to um, dry though. So as you can see, I clipped it here and it took at least maybe an hour to completely dry. So when I said that I inputted myself into Jade's design, I do mean it kind of literally. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I wear my own face in drag onto my t-shirts um, just because um, and so I did it for Jade why not and I made it look like a manga panel as you can see so I'm literally like Kowan from Sailor Moon but I printed them out onto this tattoo paper that I got from Amazon um, so it's a temporary tattoo it's kind of like a transfer and it's really really cool you can print any designs and it's a really good way actually to test out tattoos and so I'm just gonna go ahead and place that over here onto our white panel um, on the graphics and I'm taking a cotton ball and we're just gonna go ahead and wet it so it's literally like a temporary tattoo it's the same exact thing but you're just printing it so it's really really fun it's really really cool and it's very very detailed and there you have it! And as you can see, the image is actually flipped because I always forget to flip it before printing it. So if you're gonna print out words or something like that or logos, make sure to flip it first before you print it out. And now for her boots, I'm actually gonna be using a Bratz shoe and I believe this is the 2015 Sasha Selfie shoes. And I love it so much. Obviously it's Timberlands inspired, but it's like a wedge heel. And we're gonna go ahead and turn it gothic a little bit. We're gonna Jeffrey Campbell it up, if you know what I mean. So I'm just taking my matte black acrylic paint and we're gonna paint the entire shoe. Um, just make sure it, you cover everything up and usually this step takes maybe two to three layers just so that everything is completely covered. And now let's go ahead and add some spikes. Now these are nail spikes, that's why they're really really tiny and they're perfect for dolls. And this is kind of like where the new goth or tumbler goth kind of comes into play. This was so popular in like 2012 to maybe late 2014. Jeffrey Campbell was so so popular. Literally everyone was just wearing the Lidas or just any platform boots. And this one specifically is inspired by the Jeffrey Campbell damsel spikes and they're so so cool I wanted to have a pair of my own wasn't allowed obviously and because they were expensive but they were so cool and I was just living my fantasy through graveyard girl who has like a whole collection of Jeffrey Campbell's um, so yeah <laughs> And now we have the entire back spiked and ready to go. And I actually really like it in gold. Although personally, I don't wear a lot of gold. I feel like it just doesn't match me. And I actually don't see Jade in gold either. Um, so let's go ahead and paint it silver or gunmetal in this case. I do wish I had silver spikes because that would have been really, really cool.
and now we have it painted in gunmetal and it's so so cool I think it's a lot more edgier and more gothic and of course Jay deserves to have red bottoms so let's go ahead and paint the bottoms red oh my god it's just an amalgamation of shoe brands we have Timberlands Jeffrey Campbell's and now Christian Louboutin <laughs> And just to break the black, I am giving her laces glossy black instead of just matte black, just so that it kind of stands out on its own. And now we are done with this amalgamation of a shoe and it's so, so cool. I would love to have this, of course, obviously. And the red, the red just pops so, so well. I love it so much. I decided I wanted to give Jade another pair of shoes when I was playing around with this shoe specifically and I believe it's from Ethan. I'm not entirely sure because I got them thrifted but it's in perfect condition. I did kind of clean it up and I mean it's already black so we're just gonna have to modify it a little bit. I'm gonna cut out the ankle because obviously she's wearing fishnets and I want it to blend perfectly. So I'm just taking my exacto knife over here. Boom, there's done. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint that with glossy black acrylic paint. This shoe was so so fun and it's definitely still very trendy. It's definitely very Oxford slash creepers type of vibe. And of course, we're gonna turn it into blue batons. <laughs> Red bottoms is a must for this one. Moving on to her bag, I decided to give her a coffin bag because I own multiple coffin bags and they're so so fun and I love them so much and I'm just drawing it out over here to get the size reference as well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and trace that onto Warbla um, and I'm gonna trace two of them obviously because we need two sides. And just try to get it as symmetrical as possible, uh, you know, as close to it as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect because, I mean, nothing is perfect. <laughs> And now I'm taking this thick pleather fabric and I'm just gonna go ahead and cover both of the coffin shapes completely. So I do own um, a couple of coffin bags. I think I have maybe three. And although they look really, really cool, they're so unconventional to use in everyday wear. Um, just because obviously it goes, it's smaller in the bottom and then it's wider at the top. So you literally, I feel like you can't put anything in it. <laughs> like you can just put your like phone, wallet, keys, and that's it. Like you can't even put a sketch pad in there. I mean, I guess it depends on the size, but the ones that I have, you really can't. <laughs> and now we have two of them together, as you can see, completely covered and beautiful and so satisfying looking. Um, now let's go ahead and put it together. And I'm just gonna go and cut a kind of a border um, to frame the front of the coffin. And then for the sides of the coffin, I'm just taking another piece of Warbla and I'm hot gluing it together. And I'm leaving an opening up top so we can actually put stuff in there. Maybe like her mask or something, or like her pencils or something, I don't know. Um, and then I'm just super gluing some snaps here and there also for our straps. And for the straps, it's literally just a piece of long pleather fabric, the same exact one, and I'm also gluing the snaps onto it. And then I'm taking a thinner and smaller strap of pleather fabric and I'm gluing it um, to act kind of like as a handle. I thought that would be really, really cool and it would really give it the bag vibe, you know? And now I'm just painting the sides and also the inside with glossy black acrylic paint. And then I'm just taking this metallic nail art rectangle piece thingy um, to act as a branding for the bag. And I'm painting it with the same exact gunmetal silver.
Now let's go ahead and attach the straps. And I actually wanted to have spikes onto the coffin as well, but I decided to just keep it minimalistic and just as clean and simple as possible. Now let's go ahead and work on the belt and I'm taking the same exact pleather fabric and I'm cutting a strip of it. Obviously, you want to measure it. And for this one, I'm actually sewing the snaps just because I know I'm going to be taking it um, on and off a little bit more. So we want to secure it um, better. <laughs> And now I have a bunch of rings over here. I got it from Michaels and we're choosing the biggest one, but you can really use any rings. And I'll just glue that onto a separate strap of pleather fabric that will then glue it to the belt. And then let's go ahead and attach some chain. And really you can use any chain. Um, usually I go to the dollar store and buy necklaces there and I would use those chains because sometimes uh, the chains in Michaels is a little bit expensive and I just super glued that onto the belt. And now let's go ahead and work on our mask. And over here, I just glued two fabrics together, one white and also one black. And the black is actually facing backwards. So the wrong side is the one facing out. And I added the white underneath so that it doesn't stain her face. Sometimes black fabric will stain a doll, um, either the body or the face up, or it will rub onto the doll's face. And I don't want that. So the white side is gonna be pressing onto her face. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue on some black thread. And this is the same thread I used for Bunny Boo's mask. For the design, I'm using a bunch of these nail art type of accessories and I'm taking a lot of the silvers from it. And I wanna give her kind of like a Neko inspired face mask because I think they're so so cute so I'm just adding the nose over here and also the whiskers and of course it's a cat mask because she's cool cat you know we needed some kitty element in there <laughs> and now let's go ahead and dress her up For her earrings, I'm using real safety pins over here and they're small enough to be like earrings for Jade. And I'm just attaching that onto real earrings. Like these are earring studs and right there. As you can see, I put tape on it because um, the earring hole is a little bit too big. Um, and this one, it fits perfectly. Boom. So, so cool. And now we're done.